Hi, Professor Carol J.M. here. In this video, I'm going to do an overview of statistics and show you why it's so useful. Coming right up. So we're going to start with definitions. Data is information that we get from observations, counts, measurements and responses. Statistics uses that data. It's the science of collecting, analyzing, and interpreting the data, which we then use to make decisions. There's two types of data. Data are called population and samples. The population is everything that you're interested in, your topic of interest. So all the outcomes, all the responses, all the measurements, or the count from the entire population. A sample, well, that's a subset. That's the outcomes, the responses, the measurements, but it's just from a part of the population. Sampling is a science, really, all by itself. And it's really quite challenging to get a sample that represents an entire population so that we can draw conclusions about the population. And most statistics are done with sampling. You may have heard on the TV sometimes people mentioning a Gallup poll. And um, a guy called George Gallup, way back in the 1930s, um, started polling or getting surveys of voters about American politics. So he introduced the idea of the presidential job approval way back in the 1930s. Today, a company might survey a sample of 2,000 voters and ask a question something like, do you approve or disapprove of the way the president is handling his job? So if we think about this, the population here that we're interested in talking about or finding out about is all U.S. voters. And the sample is 2,000 U.S. voters. So you'd think they'd have a pretty good procedure to find those voters, you know, so many from each state, that kind of thing. And different companies have different ways of doing that. More definitions. We use the word parameter. Sometimes we say population parameter, P for population. And that's a characteristics of the entire population. A statistic comes from the sample, and sometimes it's called a sample statistic. So remember, S for sample. Now, statistics can vary from sample to sample, but the parameter is, since it belongs to the entire population, that doesn't vary. So, so the statistic depends on how good our sample is. The United States Census is mandated by Article 1, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution to conduct a census of the entire population of the United States every 10 years. It says representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers. The census should count every resident in the United States, the whole population. Back in 1999, there was a proposal to use some sampling techniques and this raised a big constitutional legal question. And it turned out a majority of the Supreme Court let stand a ruling by a lower court that prohibited sampling for drawing up con congressional districts. Descriptive statistics organizes, summarizes, and displays data, as in the chart you see there. Inferential statistics uses sample data to draw conclusions about the whole population. And we use probability to compare our sample to chance. We also very often make inferences from our sample data. There's been about 13 presidents since the late 1930s. And in that time, it turns out Harry Truman, the 33rd US president, has the lowest average approval rating over his two terms. His approval rating was about 45.4%. President John F. Kennedy had the highest average over his time in office, 70.1%. Poor old Harry Truman. His quote from him is, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. There's quite a bit of drama hidden in that 45.4% average presidential approval rating. 
Harry Truman was at a high in June 1945, 87%. But by the time he left office in February 1952, he plummeted down to 22%, one of the lowest approval ratings of any president. So what do you think happened back then? Well, June 1945 was near the end of World War II, so we would expect a very high approval rating. In 1952... That was when the Corvette prototype uh, was put out. Mr. Potato Head was released. But more importantly, the Korean War was fought to a stalemate. 3,000 people in the United States died of polio and 57,000 children were paralyzed. Although Jonas Salk invented the vaccine against polio in 1952, it wasn't released to wide use in 1955. So many historians think that Harry Truman's low approval rating was due to the Korean War stalemate. In summary then, we collect data from a sample of the population and we do that carefully. If we're satisfied that our sample is representative of the population, and we often make that decision by looking at probability, we use descriptive statistics to describe and show our sample data, and then we can make inferences about the population parameters we're interested in based on our sample data. From the examples that we've looked at, we might say that by 1952, a great majority of US voters had a very low approval of President Harry Truman, about 78% or thereabouts at its lowest. Thank you.